This is August 13th, 2016. It's time to wake up and be the change for our pollinators. You can take any backyard in the U.S. and look at it and it's mainly just all grass and chemicals. So let's start changing our thinking people and start planting what we have taken out and we need to put back in. This here is a seed mixture that every year in fall time, the seeds dry, I cut them off and I replant them in the spring. This consists of many things, sunflowers, cosmos, lupine, tick seed, and buckwheat. And buckwheat, I just cut off all the seeds, so now I replant it in this bare spot down here. Our backyard usually is about six to eight inches long. I just cut all the clover down, hoping that the dandelions come back sooner. Now, most people think that, you know, why would you want dandelions in your backyard? Well, dandelions are really good for humans and for bees, especially honeybees. Honeybees use dandelions to brood their young basically raise their babies. So we've got sunflower patch over here also, and these are our gardens. And the bees just absolutely love, you know, cucumbers, tomatoes, lettuce flowers. This here is a row of asters that I started from seed two years ago. And it has purple flowers and Oh, pink flowers on it, but they just ready to bloom. They are not blooming yet. And I just started another baby roll. You can see the baby asters right there from seed this year. They're doing really well. The bees absolutely love strawberries, strawberry flowers that is. That's a strawberry flower. And they love cucumber flowers, which are on the trellis. You can see they're yellow. This year I made a bunch of raised beds for my wife just for her herbs. And this bare spot used to be cilantro. And cilantro has little white flowers on it that the honeybees absolutely love. So I'd recommend doing a whole big patch of cilantro if you're a beekeeper. And there's some mint here. There's some hyssop. These are chives. Chives get a purple flower on it. These are raspberries, which I noticed that there are a couple nice raspberries to eat. There is lemon barbina. Here's some more hyssop. This is lemon bee balm, which some um, sage behind it. And this is lavender behind the hyssop. These are purple loose strife. The honeybees absolutely love these. So do the bumblebees. Let's see if we can get a picture of a bumblebee. Or a close up of one. There's a nice bumblebee doing her job. I have a honey beehive here that I started on May 15th of 2016 this year. And this is my new design where you open up the door and it has a plexiglass in there and you can see the bees working. But this hive already produced about 50 pounds of honey. I've actually did one split off of it already this year. Usually you don't get splits off of hives in the first year. But this one's just rocking and rolling this year. This is uh, another aster that has not bloomed yet. The honeybees absolutely love asters. If, if there's two flowers I'd plant, one would be the um, aster plant and the cosmos. And of course the dandelion, but everybody has dandelions, just don't 
kill the dandelions. And this is a hive. It's been here for five years. I'm going to see if I can get into the bees. Here's our front entrance way. This hive's been here for five years. This year I already did three splits off of it and took about 150 pounds of honey off of it. And then I have one more hive here. And the first hive I just showed you, which was my wife's hive, this is the split that I took off of her hive already. And it already has one, two, three, four, five boxes on it. And this one has enough boxes ready to go through winter time. Now keep in mind, I'm a holistic beekeeper and organic as much as the environment will allow me to be. A holistic beekeeper does many things different compared to a traditional commercial beekeeper. A couple of things are we do not paint our boxes because that has chemicals on it. We do not run plastic frames because the plastic leaches into the honey. We do not feed them white sugar or high fructose corn syrup. We only feed the bees honey, which that's what they make for themselves. They don't make it for humans, they make it for them. But we take it off. If you're supplementing white sugar or high fructose corn syrup through the winter time or the fall or the spring, you're giving them food that has nothing in it. It has no proteins, no enzymes, nothing beneficial and only wreaks havoc on their immune system. And that's one of the reasons why the bees are dying off because people are feeding them white sugar. And then there's the holistic part of it too. We only run the 4.9 millimeter bees what God intended to run, not 5.2, 5.3, 5.4. The bigger the bee theory has it, the more pollen they bring in. Makes sense, but it backfired on people who do who do beekeeping that way because their bigger bees can't fight off mites as well as the 4.9 millimeter. So. This is just a video showing that you can turn your backyard into a beautiful haven for all our pollinators because they're all having a hard time. So just start changing your thinking and please don't use any sort of chemicals. And thanks for watching this video. This is Jeff from Bees for Life.